Hello Targar friends, hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for another Orc Mode workout and today was Max Effort Bench Press Day. Quick reminder for those of you who watch these every day, please click like down below, help me keep the likes higher than the dislikes, be greatly appreciated. Let's get over to the video. I had a few people kind of come in already and come like, wow, these look really awkward to set up. Yes, it is. Pen presses are a pain and particularly with this football bar. Uh, I did get a 20 pound PR since the last time I tried this lift, um, which is to be expected because my bench is up 17 pounds since the last time I tried this lift also, right? So uh, it sounds about right. It seems like it should be the best, closest thing to a bench. I did the Buffalo bar, right, with a close grip. Well, that was up 17 pounds since the end of the year in December and the last time I did this lift I got the 295 it was tough and then I, I couldn't budge 315 at all off the pence. Uh, so we got 315 with it obviously using the closer grip. I don't feel that I get a better strength on the closer grip on this bar though to be honest. Like I've noticed that before I feel weaker. That's funny with the straighter bars and other bars I'm stronger with the close grip. With this bar, I noted in the past, even doing rep work, I'm actually slightly stronger with a wide, but I thought I would keep with my theme of doing the closed grip. Either either way, though, a 20-pound PR, right? And it was a grinder. Now, obviously, because it's hard off the bottom, people would be like, well, I mean, is that the chest? Well, it's like, no, because it's a, a dead pin. It's supposed to be super hard off the bottom, right? These are stupidly hard off the bottom. And, uh, I mean, I've had people say, Shouldn't, should this be close to your regular bench? No. No. 315 here, you guys saw me close grip 352 within the last month. All right? Over 30 pounds difference. Notice I struggled with the lockout, and I felt tremendous triceps. I got it locked. But that was hard. It felt like 10 seconds. Trying to lock that last bit. And my triceps were throbbing. As we know, we need more tricep work. So today we did do some stuff slightly different. People will say, what do you mean? Well, I didn't because I'm on a deadlift tomorrow. I only deadlift max every three weeks as I rotate good mornings into the rotation. I really did not want to fatigue my grip. I don't want to fatigue my grip at all because I've been doing a lot of grip work since the last deadlift. I got a PR, but my grip was a little slippery. Okay. I've been training my grip really hard. I wanted to have the day off from grip, so I did not do my rowing. Okay, I did not do my rowing. Be one of the few exceptions where I skip it. Normally we want to get 10 sets in. But we do a lot of other upper back work because of all the shoulder stuff. And uh, looking at today and looking at kind of what I threw in, there are some changes I'm going to make a little bit with these, these lifts. I know the closed grip pressing with the different bars really brings a lot to the table for me. We're going to keep it in. We know we need tricep specialization. So it's like, how do I deal with the delt thing? Well, uh, what I think I'm going to do is you guys will see I'm adding more and more small exercises for my delts. I, my, my entire shoulder girdle is going to be hit with small movements, just like my triceps are. Okay, If I'm going to close grip bench, I've got to overdevelop my delts and triceps. They're going to have to be an ultra high priority. And then mainly because, again, I've had some delt inflammation. I need the shoulder health. I need to just build my shoulders all the way around. All three heads and the traps and all the rotators. Everything's got to be built. I don't necessarily need to overhead press right now to do that, which I, I do today. Uh, but as I did it, I, you know, I felt some low back fatigue. Because, again, I do a, a layback, which is the correct way to do it, particularly with the bar I use. So we'll get to that in a second. Let's let's talk about the closed grip benching now. Um, I was only able to get like nine rep sets, right? I thought I would get 10. I'm like, let me just bump this up a hair. So this is 237. I thought I'd get 10s, but even with this bar, I got I got nines today. But I still wanted to increase the weight, and we'll rotate bars around. I'll go back and do more of the, the fat bar. Again, I just wanted to skip on it for these today because I'm going to deadlift. I use it for the overhead press. But again, trying to set myself up for success tomorrow on the deadlifts, right? I want to set myself up for success because, we, again, we don't get that many deadlift max days in. And that's my bread and butter. I am at this point better at deadlift than any other lift as far as the strength charts go. It's, it is what I'm good at. I mean, I'm good at squats. But technically, if we go over to, to the more elite strength standards, I am, I am actually better at deadlifts. 
So I want to keep that flowing. Like I want to knock down a stupid deadlift this year. Okay, I want to get a stupid deadlift. So I need to make those max ever days count. And if that means I slightly adjust some things I do on the day before on bench day, that's fine. As long as we work everything correctly, hit the weak points. But I noticed on the press today, now I did get 10 for the first two. I went up five more pounds with this. I got 10 on the first two with this wide grip. Got a tremendous amount of activation though. God, man, it felt really good. It actually felt great in my shoulders too. You know, when you feel that pump, because I've had that inflammation and I've still been rehabbing it and working on it and the strength is coming back, but I still get a little bit at certain times at night and I have to get up and do mobility work sometimes if I wake up to pee and stuff and crackle everything around. All right. So when I do something like this and it feels good, that's a nice thing. All right. It did feel good. But so did all the other stuff today. So did all the other stuff like the front raises and things I did. But I've realized, you know, I could replace this with dips again. So why dips? Because I need, I'm going to need tricep specialization. Dips will give me pecs, triceps. I need to close grip. I need to dip and I need to do lots of extensions. And I need to do extensions that my elbows can handle. We don't need tendonitis. I can come back to the press anytime. Every time I take this press out, I come back and I'm stupid strong at it. I'm just, I'm built a base on it and it will always come back. So I might work with just the close grip pressing and the dips and the extensions and then everything else is going to be shoulder, shoulder, shoulders, upper back. Because I can build my whole shoulder girdle without this, right? I don't have to worry about the extra stress on the low back because I do so many reverse hypers and hanging leg raises and all that. It's just like there's, there's plenty of core activation for me. I don't have to have it here today. It's kind of like when I do the inverted rows. It's not necessary. Even my off days, I do 15 sets of ultra high rep reverse hypers. Not counting the ones you guys see. All the heavy good mornings. My erectors get worked hard. So I might be thinking then in terms of, you know, dips might help more with recovery. These I went up in weight today. Adjusted the chain slightly so that I barely got like one link on the floor with or close to it. They're still coming up a little bit. These are tough though, they're awkward with that lockout. But this is what I need. I need that lockout strength for my triceps. Five sets of this every workout fits the bill. You know, so again, we do three sets of the, of the bigger movements and then five on the small movements. Why? We can recover from it. Throw your volume into the muscles that need it. Okay. Your bigger muscles will grow off the other work. Is there any doubt that my chest and everything is going to grow from the work I did already? Of course, it's going to grow. Now, when I throw in dips and stuff, that'll help too. But this, this other volume needs to go into smaller movements. That's why you see even on the lower body days, what do you see me do? Glute ham raises, reverse hypers. After my big stuff and my good mornings. Okay, they're smaller movements. Now they look like big movements because they involve lower body and things, but they're they're smaller movements. They're not really multi-joint exercises. Those are not actually. They're single joint. People just don't realize it because it's a lower body involved. Like what? It looks like a big compound. No, it's single joint. That's why I do them. After we get a few sets of the big stuff out of the way after the max or dynamic effort. So the same thing here, guys. Throw your volume where you need it. And yeah, I did 20 sets of single joint movements today. 20 sets. Where I need it. Okay. That's that's what we want to do, guys. So right here, and this is very specific to my tricep needs. Now my triceps are going to grow from the other stuff. I mean, close grip pressing, and I throw the dips back in, and the speed benching. Triceps grow from all that. But we really need to be looking at what parts of the tricep in the strength curve do I need the most right now and that is that lockout so by doing this with chains we number one train that lockout number two we take stress off the tendon now keeping in mind I am doing band press downs on a lot of my off days sometimes even today I'll probably do a second workout later for just rear delts and, and triceps with bands Okay, that stuff's going to get hit again. 
That's, again, people who kind of comment, have people comment, well, what side of this system is low volume? Really? You're telling me this is low volume? All right, look at all the smaller movements we do at the end. And I'm going to hit some of these again for like 20 and 30 rep sets with bands again also. And the same with the off days. You know, people talk about quads and things like I drag a sled on my off days. Sled drags to light your quads up. I do plyometrics. I do box jumps. Uh, I decided to do front raises. Again, with my shoulder, the, the last part of my shoulder where I'm getting a little bit of irritation, I had to kind of pop it all around to get it to do these. Uh, but front delts. Now, people would say this is a useless exercise. Not really. Not if we need to overdevelop the entire delt. Yes, my front delts get a lot of work with the other stuff. And there you guys can still see the, the loose skin and fat I've got. I don't care. People are always like, you hide it, you hide it, you wear your belt. Except when I show it. I wear the belt on movements where I have a benefit to wearing the belt. This doesn't need a belt. So there you guys have it. And you know what? I feel like I'm slowly still getting leaner at this point. Upper abs are coming in. And yes, loose skin contains fat, by the way. Everybody knows this. Loose skin, when it's pure loose skin, looks like paper. It looks like cling wrap that you could pull away. It rarely gets to that point because it tends to tighten up when it gets that length. So people ask, how does this tighten up? Well, as I lose fat again later, as I get leaner, a lot of that will tighten up more. It may never be perfect. I accept that. Who cares? I'm not a physique competitor. Who cares? And in fact, even for attracting partners, they don't care. You guys get so diluted with that stupidity. They don't care. You can find hot, attractive partners without having a perfect physique. The vast majority of people who have tens don't have perfect physiques. 99% of them don't. That should tell you something. Stop worrying about the stupidity. Be secure in who you are. Being secure and confident will actually get you the attraction you want more than anything else you could possibly do. Okay. Stop worrying about the stupidity, guys. You really have to. And I get it. I mean, I run a strength channel and fitness is in there. And some people associate that with fitness physique. But it's, it's less important than you guys realize. It really is. But back to the front raises. Uh, I'm going to build all the heads of the delt maximally. I need my entire shoulder structure to grow. And I think this will help my benching. Yes, we know triceps are the number number one weak link. My delts take a lot of the load of my triceps give out though. So let's just build them. Plus we need the whole shoulder structure because I need more upper back. I need it for my squat. Well, the, all this stuff now hits those muscles. This does contribute. Yeah, the good mornings and the T-spine matter, but so do the traps. Rear delts, everything. The whole upper back which is, again, a combination of shoulder and back, really. And we've got to hit it all. So it's five sets from each angle. And we are picking very, very different angles intentionally. But the plate raises, that's my first time doing them. I've never done a plate raise in my life. It's like, well, we need to try some new things. We need to keep building all these areas. Now, my rear delts do need more work than my front delts. But they get more work than my front delt. So we're, we're actually throwing it all in. We're getting it all caught up. Okay. I need all three heads of the delt and the entire trap and the rotators. Everything needs to just be stronger and bigger. It's only going to get there by hitting it. Delts are very volume resistant. Okay. They're very volume resistant. So unlike the triceps, which, you know, there aren't that many angles involved, I can get in and do five extra sets on triceps with all the pressing, and they'll, they'll grow. As long as I do it consistently, plus all the band work, let's keep that in mind. That is part of the weekly volume. My, my triceps get an insane amount of volume right now. And by the way, I got stronger on those chains this time. These picked up a couple reps, a little smoother with the same amount of chains. But, you know, again, this is hard. And I'm trying to get the arms out the side, and I just can't. It's just, it's hard. I accept the fact that I might not be able to. And that's okay. As long as we keep it pretty strict. And that's why I'm pressed up against there. To cut the swinging down to some extent. 
but it's hard even with the change but it's hitting everything like I feel it where I need to feel it and keeping in mind the side delts do get hit by the front and the rear delt exercises on top of it they are getting a fair amount of work because there's always degrees of overlap with all this stuff and we're also making sure we're getting the traps from a couple different angles so again five sets of these right around 15 reps pretty much close to failure on most of them some of them i did hit failure on the last few sets right at that 15 rep mark front raises was about 15 i didn't take them all the way to the edge because i'm new to the exercise i don't want the extra dumps i'll continue to keep them in the rotation though and we can do variations we can mess with chains or, or the little bit of dumbbells i have or kettlebells or whatever i've got to do down the road we'll mess around with stuff we have options we have options but shoulders 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 triceps now of course we're going to hit biceps tomorrow after deadlifts um, i think that's the way i want to do it just because i get so many smaller movements for the upper body and then my biceps aren't ever fatigued when i have to do any pulling i'm not risking any issues there um took me a minute to get these adjusted for these and notice I've got a different hand position with this I've got it gripped more in a hammer grip rather than an overhand handle uh, again it just seems to get the rear delt a little harder for me and again I do I don't have the greatest shoulder range of motion and then it's hard with the chains but again as long as it hits what I need it to hit so we're trying to work the rear delts and traps there and for spinatus all that and there there I feel it in all of them so it's good getting the desired result and of course I feel them with the band pull aparts later and I do those with an underhand grip by the way for those curious I do my band pull aparts now completely underhand so again we're we're attacking all this from a few different angles on these smaller movements but I have to build the entire shoulder structure all of it nothing can be left as a weak link I'm getting older trying to get my bench up I know my shoulders and triceps need to be a hell of a lot stronger and they're only going to get stronger by training them and getting them bigger. And this is also going to, again, build me a more stable shoulder structure to press from. Um, again, injury prevention. Building all of this up and hitting enough different angles that we're not getting overuse, rotating through things. And if I have to, I can change these around to slightly different variations. But the chains and stuff gives me really some, some interesting variation. Because even if we change chain weight it changes the strength curve as we add weight. So that gives us an interesting thing on some of these from a perspective of, of avoiding overuse. We're actually technically getting a new exercise when we change the weight because again the curve is different because of the unloading. So again building it all and then the last set here. Uh, but I'm pretty happy with today's workout. Everything felt good. I mean, I'm happy with the PR. A lot of people say, oh, that's 315. But yeah, it's a dead pen with a football bar. It's not a 315 bench. If you can do that, I promise you, your bench is not only 315. Be serious. All right, guys. Well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.